about this guy right here. And uh, if you're listening to this, uh, there's a picture of a young guy playing basketball. Some of you might recognize him. Well, this is Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant, when he was in high school. And uh, on the left here, what I have is an actual scouting report uh, that somebody wrote about him, a very reputable scout, wrote this about him when he was looking to come into the NBA. Ball handling is questionable. He's not ready for the rigors of NBA life. Doesn't have a true position because he kind of played all five positions a little bit. He was, you know, that in between size. And they were like, ah, he kind of plays all the positions, but he doesn't really play like one position great. He does them all kind of okay. Um, they said his shooting isn't effective enough to be a guard, which was kind of the, the position that he leaned into the most and is good, but not great. So these were some of the things that they said about Kobe Bryant. And at the time, if you listen to some of his um, you know, interviews, they weren't completely wrong. It wasn't like they missed it. They had a pretty decent assessment of where he was. Um, well, this is the end result of Kobe Bryant's unbelievable story career, which has him arguably on the Mount Rushmore of all the great NBA players of all time. 15-time All-NBA team, 12 All-Defensive team, four-time All-Star champion, five-time NBA champion, two-time scoring champion, holds 39 NBA records. I mean, the list goes on, okay? And how did Kobe go from this to that? He did it in his self-described manner through continuous improvement. So what does that mean? What is continuous improvement? This is the things. We talk about stuff like this. We talk about, you know, that all the time, right? The thing that Kobe Bryant was focused on was winning. And if you're watching this on YouTube or live, you can see this. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Uh, love Fast and Furious, uh, Furious movies. Uh, got a little insane when they started going out to space, but you know, it is what it is. This is what Kobe was focused on. He wanted to win and he knew that just consistently getting better little by little was how he was going to do it. He talks about his summer and going, okay, you know, I knew I had to work on my jump shot. So that, you know, off season, I was just focused on the jump shot. The next season jump shot was a lot better, but I noticed toward the end of the season, uh, the ball was on target, but it started falling short close to the end of games where I had played along or later in the season. So I realized the problem wasn't my shot. The problem was my conditioning. It was my legs specifically. So I did a lot of weightlifting and strengthening my legs so they wouldn't get as tired during games that year. And it was just dissecting little intentional things and getting 1% better all the time. So he said the mindset isn't about seeking a result. It's more about the process of getting to that result. It's about the journey and the approach. It's a way of life. I do think that's important in all endeavors to have that mentality. RIP Mamba, I love it. So some of you may have seen this chart before. For those of you that aren't watching or listening to this, this is a 1% better every day versus a 1% worse every day uh, mentality. And what you see is when you get 1% worse every day for a year, uh, basically that takes you pretty close to zero. I mean, it, you're, you're, you're right at where you were. You don't really see much of a difference at all, but there is definitely a slow and gradual decline. But when you're getting just 1% better every day, what happens is there is a bell curve to where things kind of stay flat, kind of go up, kind of go up, and then boom, all of a sudden it skyrockets. One of the things that I actually noticed this in is I used to teach guitar lessons to people. And there would be this moment when you would be teaching people certain chords and rhythm specifically, and they would practice it and the rhythm was forced and it never was really on. And then all of a sudden something would click and you would see it. And then there would be exponential growth in their skills with guitar to the next level because it's like, oh, I can feel it now. Like all of this grunt work and making these things that were, you know, following this metronome and feeling robotic. Now it's like, it's just in my head. It's in my body. It's all working together. It's seamless. And that's where that bell curve really starts to kick up. But again, I, we, we've, we've seen this before. We've heard people talk about this before. Get 1% better every day. Okay, Steven, that's great. What does that mean? What does that mean to get 1% better? 
how do I get 1% better? All right, I have to warn you. I put a disclaimer up. There is math that lies ahead. <laughs> For some of you right now, you might be freaking out a little bit. Oh God, no, please, not math. Not my favorite topic in school. Don't worry about it. It's not that difficult, but I did warn you. There is some math coming up. Okay, a lot of times we focus on the fact that we have 24 hours in a day. Well, first off, any calculation that's focused on 24 hours in a day is wrong because we're sleeping for some of that. So that doesn't count. Sleep is very important. We do not want to negate that. So I take out in these kind of calculations, the 24 hours, aka eight hours that we should be sleeping and make it 16. So we have 16 waking hours in our day. Okay, so 16 hours times 60 minutes. Um, and I just realized I did the math on this entire thing. <laughs> I forgot to divide it. So the 16 hours times 60 minutes, you put that at 1% and what do you get? You get 9.6 minutes. That means there's 960 minutes in a 16 hour waking day. That works out to be 9.6 minutes a day. So if we get ambitious and we round it up, that comes out to 10 minutes. So getting 1% better comes out to 10 minutes a day. Okay, that doesn't seem like a lot. I mean, that's feasible. I feel like I can do that. Can you stack some small wins with just 10 minutes a day? Can you find that? In your overly busy schedule? Yeah, of course you can if it's really important, if you really put your mindset to it. But okay, now I, I got you. I hear you. Now you might be sitting there going, well, Stephen, it, is 10 minutes enough really to get better at anything? I mean, it's 10 minutes, right? So now it's like we might be looking at this from the opposite direction. We may no longer be going, okay, yeah, no, I, I can see how I can get you know better 1% every day, but like, is that really going to move the needle on anything? Yeah. Well, let's see. What what can we get better at with just 10 minutes? I looked some things up. Did you know one of the number one causes of injury as you tend to get older tends to be the fact that you hurt something because you simply just don't stretch? Well, 10 minutes a day of stretching can prevent lots of injuries and lots of medical bills. That's pretty crazy. Uh, there's a guy on Dan Go that I love following on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn. You can check him out. Gives lots of functional stretches that you can literally do sitting in your office. Just even something as little as doing one of these neck rolls for like two minutes, you have zero excuses not to do this stuff, can prevent serious neck and spine injury as you get older, okay? So stretching, 10 minutes. You can fast walk a mile in 10 minutes. You, you probably won't even break a sweat, okay? So if you, if you go for like, God forbid, you actually do like a light jog, but if you literally just walk quickly, you can knock out a mile in about 10 minutes. It's pretty good, okay? Podcasting. Not only can you listen to a podcast that you know can contribute, there are so many unbelievable podcasts out there. By the way, check out the Stephen Corson show if you love this stuff. Um, but if you're not already listening to this on there, <laughs> but there are so many amazing podcasts out there that can contribute to your knowledge, help you build a skill set, learn about something new. What, what are you doing in your car on your way to work? It's probably longer than a 10 minute drive, right? Have a series of podcasts that are set up and ready to go so you are learning, you are investing in yourself. 10 minutes a day. I mean, a lot of times I'll put my noise-canceling headphones on um, or you know the AirPods on and so I can still hear my kids running around and screaming while I'm making dinner and I'm just listening to that. And then, you know, whenever anybody falls and hits their head or, you know, hurts one of their siblings or whatever the case is, I can still hear them and intervene. But while that's happening, I'm learning. So in podcasting. You can make, I, I typed in, all you have to do is Google 10 healthy meals that you can make in 10 minutes. There are so many blogs full of delicious looking foods that you can make that are healthy and it will take you 10 minutes to make. So we can eat better. We can save money by improving our nutrition, improving our overall health, and it will take us 10 minutes. Reading. People don't read. The average person reads one book a year, and that's the average, okay? You're not, do you know what the difference is between a person who can't read and the person who doesn't read? There is none. You have no advantage in your life if you can read, but you choose not to. So if you just choose one book, even a quarter, read one book in three months, you can get through almost, you know, any average size book nowadays. You can easily get through that in three months if you just picked it up for 10 minutes a day. That's it. And if you do that, you will read four books a year and that will be 
exponentially better than the average person. And then you do that over the course of 10 years and you will be dramatically more well-informed and smarter than you were considering you're reading the right stuff, right? Meditation. It's a great way. And if you don't want to do the yoga pose, you know what? Guess what? I meditate. I don't sit here like crouching tiger, hidden dragon, or do anything fancy. I literally just go and I sit down on my little blue couch back here. I have my phone far away from me. It's turned on silent. I'll actually turn on a timer for a few minutes so I don't have to wonder when I'm done. And I will just sit there, just quiet my mind. And when I do that, and when I'm trying not to think about anything, the flood of things that I need to do, that I remember, like uh, 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 great ideas that just rush into my head because I gave myself a tiny little bit of space to actually be distractionless for a little bit. It's incredible. I usually keep a pad and pen right next to me. So when these things hit my brain, I can just write them down real quick so I don't freak out about forgetting it. And then I get back to just trying to clear my brain a little bit, okay? These are all things that we can do in 10 minutes a day. It just takes intentionality. Now, here's how you take it to the next level, though. These are all great. These, in and of themselves, though, are not going to be the thing that make the greatest impact, okay? And this is what I'm going to leave you with. This is a simple little process, I think, on how you can take that 1%, that 10 minutes a day, and you can use it to really move the needle in your life. One, you have to identify something important. So in my mastermind, I work with people on objectives. These are three-year goals. So we are looking three years out. You only get three of them, and it's what are you going to dedicate the majority of your time, money, and energy to over the next three years to accomplish. Whatever those huge goals are that we have, our objectives, we like to map it all the way back to things that we're going to be doing this week. Well, if you can think of even something that you are trying to get done on an annual basis, it's like, it's like, hey, this is an annual goal that I have. Okay, great. Back it up to this week and go, what am I trying to do this week? What is something important that I can be doing right now that moves the needle to that goal? So first you have to identify it because it has to matter. Otherwise, you're not going to do this consistently. Second is use the PACT framework to set a goal. We've been lied to and everybody wants to talk about SMART goals. Okay, you, If you haven't heard of that framework before, SMART stands for um, specific, measurable, actionable, uh, forgetting the R right now, and then time bound. <laughs> um, so you can look it up. It's a very popular framework. SMART goals have one specific problem with them. They in usually involves setting a goal, even though it, it is a good goal and a good way to do it. The problem with it is normally the goal that you set with a SMART goal has external factors to it. The reason I like the PAC framework better is because PAC stands for purposeful, actionable. The C is the big, the big game changer. It stands for continuous. And then the T is time bound. So it's similar, but there's one crucial difference. So a SMART goal would be something like, I'm trying to get to 10,000 followers on LinkedIn. Okay, I am. I'm a couple away. Go follow me so I can hit 10,000. <laughs> but if I say I want to hit 10,000 you know, people by you know, June 30th, okay, that's great. That is a good goal. It's time bound. It's all these other things. But the problem with that is I can't directly control every single element to getting to that goal. There are things that are outside of my control that, you know, algorithm changes. Uh, it could be, you know, my, you know, certain schedules or whatever the case is, or, you know, there's a ton of different things that are outside of my direct control that could prohibit me from getting to 10K. But a packed framework is different. Knowing that I like actually using SMART goals for long-term goals. I like using SMART goals for like the three-year objectives. So I'm not saying like smart's the worst thing ever or anything. It's not. It's good. I actually like it for the long-term stuff. But for the short term and what I'm trying to do now, that's why I like PACT because it's focused on actionable and continuous things. So if I know my long-term goal is to get to 10,000 followers on LinkedIn, well, then the PACT framework would be setting up a goal like I'm going to post twice a day for seven days a week. Okay, that is something that is 100% within my control. If I fail 
at posting, it's only twice a day for a week. It's only happening because I failed. There are no external circumstances that can outside of, you know, the world coming to an end and the internet getting blown up, right? Outside of that, there's nothing that's going to prevent me from hitting that goal. So it's just the, it's the difference with abs. Instead of saying, hey, I want to get six pack abs. There's a lot of different factors to that, right? But what I can control is I'm going to do 30 crunches every single day. That's packed. All right. Set aside 10 minutes each day to do this. Like I talked about in the beginning, a lot of times when we're looking to do this stuff, we set our sights too big. We want to do things that are too much of an ask. So set aside 10 minutes each day. And if you can't accomplish a small win that you can stack quickly over the course of a week, it's, it's too big. Simple as that. That's why I love 10 minutes. I think eventually you're going to want to do more than 10 minutes. But in the beginning, we should do 10 minutes. You want to stack small wins and you want to stack them fast. The reason that's powerful is because we get really motivated, but motivation fades. And what we want to do is take that motivation and transform it into discipline as quickly as possible. Well, the way that we do that psychologically and behaviorally is by doing a couple little easy things really often, really fast. And then all of a sudden it starts to become more of a habit and we start to really love it. And then we want to do more of it. And then momentum becomes discipline. That's how we do it. Okay. The next big thing, tell two people for accountability. Accountability is a key part of all the programs that I do with the True Wealth Experience, my design mastermind is built around accountability to help people get this, uh, get where they're trying to go and to accomplish their goals. And it is across the board the number one way to ensure that you will hit your goals in anything that you do. You have to get accountability. If you are not, if you are serious about something, but you do not have accountability on it, you are not serious about that thing. Simple as that. Okay. And then the last one, like I said, make your first step small and fast. If you say you want to run a 5K and you've never ran before in your life, don't make your first goal to go out and run a mile each day this week. Make it, I'm going to go to the shoe store and buy running shoes. I'm going to go to the apparel store and find out you know, what kind of clothing I should wear. Chaffage is a real thing, guys. Got to watch out. So that's what I'm talking about when we're talking about small and fast steps. Then it's, I'm going to go for a run walk and try to do this in 12 minutes. Then yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. So take these five steps, apply it to something in your life. This could be personal. This could be professional, whatever it is, and use these five ways to get 1% better at anything that you do. When you do this, you will notice that give it a little bit of time and you will start to separate yourself from your peers in whatever area that you choose to focus on. The continuous aspect of this, the actionable aspect of this, the accountability will create an environment for you to where you will not be able to fail unless you choose that you just don't want it anymore. And that's it. That's how you get 1% better. Stack wins fast, stack small wins, and just do it over and over and over again. There we go. All right, so went a little longer than I thought I would on that. Sorry, everybody. Um, I've got eight minutes left. Um, this has been a lot of fun. Christina, I see you on here. You love podcasts. Currently at the park with my kid. Just finished one entrepreneur podcast. Jumped on LinkedIn. <laughs> Listening to Stephen, always learning. Yes, you are. You, and that's one of the reasons why you crush what you do. So love, uh, love chatting with her. So if uh, you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on LinkedIn, um, post a comment. Let me know what you think about this. Share some wisdom with the crowd. Is there something that you are doing to get 1% better at anything? And I would love um, you know, to hear some specifics as well. If there's anything that, uh, hey, I was trying